Hi, I'm Marek Pawlowski. I'm the editorial director at PMN and the founder of MEX, the PMN Mobile User Experience Conference. Here with me today is Steve Ives, the CEO of Tap2, uh, a pioneer in mobile search. Uh, Steve is going to be one of the speakers at the conference addressing our mobile user experience manifesto and he's going to be tackling point number six, uh, which is entitled Search Requires a Radically Different Approach in the Mobile Environment. Uh, so we're here today to talk through a few ideas with Steve and get his views on this subject. Thanks, Marek. Good to be here. So, Steve, um, why does uh, mobile require a different approach to search than what we have on the desktop? Well, really for two reasons. The first reason is that mobile search so far has tended to take what's worked on desktop search, what's worked on a PC, and try and bring the best of that down onto the mobile. So the leaders in mobile search have been the traditional desktop search guys, Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, and that's been their natural approach. Um, but that, that brings a few problems, because you, there's a tendency to want to display PC web content high up in the results list for those kinds of search engines. And no matter what kind of transcoding engine you run those PC web results through, what you get isn't very nice to consume from a user experience perspective on most mobile devices. So do you think people are searching for the same things on their mobile devices they do on the desktop? Or is this fundamentally about trying to find very different types of content when you're in the mobile environment? Well, actually, we find that they, they're searching for a different skew of stuff. So they're, they're much more looking for content and entertainment type results than they are for in information, for detailed information type results. Because the, the context of a mobile device is really different. A mobile is a super social device, much more so than a PC. But when you say super social, um, what do you mean by that? Do you think there's also a, a communicative element to search uh, in mobile that perhaps isn't as pronounced uh, in the desktop environment? Well, by, by super social, I mean that there's, there's not one thing that you do on frequently on a mobile phone, by frequently I mean four or five times a day, that doesn't have a strong social context. So, phoning people, texting people, you know, it's usually to do with friends and family, it's not to do with solitary activities. And whilst you can do solitary stuff on a mobile phone, uh, it, it tends to be mi minority stuff that you would do once a week or once every every few days. But I defy you to, to, to come up with one thing you do on a mobile five times a day that's a solitary thing. It doesn't have a social dimension to it. Okay, so I guess fundamentally they're, they're very connected devices and it's a connected experience then which, which runs through to the search application. Yeah, and if mobile search is ever going to be mass market, if, if search is ever going to be mass market on a mobile, it's something you're going to want to do five times a day, right? Not yeah. once a week, which is where it is at the moment. So how does that manifest itself in the tattoo environment? Um, when you talk about it being um, super social and the connected features, um, how does that actually yeah, translate yeah. to the screen for the user? So one of the things that we try, we work very hard on, we don't, we don't think it's about mobile search per se, we think it's about mobile search and share. So the, the, the action sequence of the user, the task, if you like, of search is not finished on mobile until you've both found what you're looking for and you share it with a friend. Okay. So integrating the share elements of the user experience with search is very, very important to us, but I sense that for most mobile search engines it's not very important or it's not even thought about. So when we talk about search at the moment, um, I think the image that a lot of people have in their mind is the idea of going to a browser bookmark on their phone or yeah. sometimes launching a dedicated search application yeah, uh, and yeah. using that to, to discover content. Yeah. Do you think that there's the potential for it to go beyond that? If people are using this, as you say, very much as a, a social tool as well as being a, a discovery tool, um, do you think the potential for search methodology uh, is there to expand into the, the wider interface of the phone outside of the, the browser or dedicated application? Definitely. Um, we've done a couple of experiments with uh, Zy Corporation have this application called Quix, which gives you a search a search interface into your local address book and your music on your phone and, and, and any content on your phone. And the results of those experiments have been quite promising. 
And I think that there's definitely a big role for search as the universal user interface on mobile. But how you integrate the search on the device with the search off the device is, is interesting. And that, that problem hasn't really been solved. But so when you talk about the integration you mean between um, what users are doing on their desktop and what they're doing on their, their mobile device? Yeah, because it's very easy for consumers to enter the search word into a search box and be confused about whether it was to do with their stuff on their phone or out there on the mobile internet. You know, it's easy for consumers to get confused. How this market for mobile search might shape up in five years' time in the sense that um, those sort of experiences are probably going to be limited to what we'd call the, the developed Western markets, yeah, whereas yeah. potentially a lot of mobile search is going to come from uh, the emerging, emerging economies. Is, is that something that yeah. you see at the moment in Tattoo search uh, search results? Definitely. I mean, we look at our, our user logs and we have our traffic's increasing very rapidly. We see a lot of, well, our number one country is the US, and number two country is the UK, but maybe number five and six are India and Indonesia. And they are very significant markets. And for these guys, the mobile is their main form of access to the internet. So they're going to have a completely different pattern of behavior. And in some way, they're the precursors of the new, the new way that Western consumers are going to use the mobile internet. Because there's a new generation. With the generation Y people with iPhones are going to be using it a lot more than their desktop device. And so in some ways, you know, the emerging economies uh, are leading the way into the mobile device being like the most important device in your world and the desktop being secondary. How important then do you think it is to uh, design the user experience of these services um, with very particular types of, of user in mind? Uh, I, mean, I guess it's a, a fundamental principle of what we talk about with user yeah, experience yeah, yeah. and what we'll be talking about at the conference later this month is this idea that you should be designing services for individuals. Uh, yeah. I mean, is that something that you guys do here at Tattoo? Yeah, we've even joked about whether when you use Tattoo, that the Tattoo logo should, instead of just saying Tattoo Beta, it should say Tattoo for Blackberry or Tattoo for iPhone. And then when you've done three or four searches, it says Tattoo for Marek. Uh-huh. Interesting. And we might do that one day. But mm -hmm. So that, I guess that's an example of how you you customise the experience for the individual, but actually most, most mobile search companies today, they aren't even getting to first base, which is saying, look at all our users, can we break these users down into segments of consumers with similar behaviour and try and build experiences for those segments. Um, we've identified four segments of tattoo that are really, really important. We call them the uh, careerist power user, that's like you and me. Uh, the iPod generation, which is young people, Generation Y, very, very music oriented, mm -hmm. uh, using the device very informally in social situations. Uh, then we have unwired socials, which is like uh, people working in retail, or people that are driving vans, or people that don't have not they don't have much access to the PC internet, so they really do rely heavily on the, on the mobile internet. And you find a lot of those people, you know, even in the developed economies. And then finally, the, what we call the digerati, the bloggers, the, you know, the really advanced users and the super spreaders. So we try and build our user experience to uh, appeal to those groups of users.